Cartoons sometimes pose questions that would change everything, and yet they're never answered. It's interesting to take a look back at all the cartoon mysteries that have no answers right now, and there's a chance things could stay that way. So with all that being said, let's get on to the top 10 unsolved cartoon mysteries. Number 10. Why did the Time Portal Guardian see a different future for Samurai Jack? In Samurai Jack Season 3, Jack was in search of a Time Portal and came face to face with a guy we call the Guardian. He was an extremely strong opponent and he was told to protect the Time Portal with his life, so he did whatever it took to keep people away from it. Jack's battle against him unfortunately led to a loss, but what followed was something really weird. Despite being defeated, the Guardian gave a small hint of hope for the future of the series. He says, You can't use it yet! Samurai Jack, not yet, and shows a very future version of Jack with a beard and wearing completely different clothes than what he has on right now. When the show ended in season 4 and we still never saw this future design of Jack, fans were left really confused because why would the series set something up and never finish it? Well, season 5 came along and we did finally get a bearded Jack, though it was completely different than what was shown in the Guardian's time portal. Season 5 told us that the Guardian was dead, so there was no way to go through the time portal even though it was previously foreshadowed to happen. You can't use it yet, Samurai Jack. Not yet. What exactly happened in this timeline, and why did this version of Jack never appear in the series? One noteworthy piece of information is that from 2013 to 2015, there were Samurai Jack comics continuing the story that the show left unfinished. It made complete sense to do this because Jack never even faced Aku and there was absolutely no proper conclusion. In these comics, we get a glimpse of the future Samurai Jack, the one from the Guardian's portal, which was awesome. However, the events and final arc that played out in these comics are no longer considered canon because there's an official ending with adult Swim Season 5. I really want to see what would have happened in the real show with future Samurai Jack taking the Guardian's time portal, cause it feels like an abandoned plot point that the crew decided to take away, maybe because they thought of something better. This Jack could be from a different timeline, which would explain how different he looks from Season 5. Number 9. What is Seuss Ramirez hiding? In the very first episode of Gravity Falls, we are introduced to the supernatural objects and creatures of the weird town. Dipper is having a strange time exploring everything around the Mystery Shack, but when we look at the person who's already been working there, Seuss, we can see a huge unsolved mystery. In a Gravity Falls browser game on Disney's website, Rumble's Revenge, there was a code that translated to the the handyman knows more than you think. At first, one may assume that this is referring to the town's crazy guy, Old Man McGucket, but it's still very likely talking about the Mystery Shack's handyman, Seuss. Why? Because he's referred to as Handyman more than once in the show, and he goes around maintaining and fixing whatever he can. While maybe this whole thing could have been brushed under the rug as a small plot point that would never end up happening, Season 1's Dreamscapers continued the mysterious Seuss storyline. The gang faces off against the dream demon Bill Cipher, and he literally says, I gotta hand it to you kids, you're a lot more clever than I gave you credit for, especially the fat one. Clearly referring to Seuss. Why would Bill, of all characters, mention the secret of Seuss? He could have very easily just not said anything, but he saw something different with him than the other characters, so it makes a question, what exactly did Bill see in this guy? The unanswered questions don't stop here, however. Whenever there's some sort of secret room hidden in the Mystery Shack, this handyman is always the one to find it. So I was cleaning up behind this bookcase when BOOM! Mystery door! This old shack is full of weird secrets. Despite being hard to locate, he found the wax figure room in Headhunters as well as the author's room in Carpe Diem. Combine all these clues with the fact that Seuss has been in the town of Gravity Falls for a pretty long time, and you realize that maybe he does know more than he seems. Unfortunately, as the series continued, we never got a real answer to this unsolved mystery. Despite being set up during Season 1, the backstory of Seuss was never explored, and the Handyman code as well as Bill's comment became completely unrelated to the overall story arc of the show. Who knows, maybe this is one of those stories that Alex Hirsch had planned in the very beginning, but then decided to stop because he wanted to focus on the author of the journals and Weird Mageddon and all that stuff. At a convention in 2015, someone asked him if Seuss knew more than he thought, and this is what was said. I think Seuss knows less than he seems. Um, 
I'll, I'll say this. Seuss has been in the Mystery Shack since he was uh, since he was super young, as we've seen in uh, Blendon's game. So Seuss has borne witness to many, 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 many more weird things in town than Dipper and Mabel have. The problem is, he's Seuss. Nobody believes him. And even he's not sure, like, yeah, I think I saw, like, a big, like, slime monster eat, like, a cow, but it might have been a video game. So, at this point, it seems like Alex didn't think of Seuss as a character significant to the secrets of Gravity Falls. Instead, he was just a guy who knew more about the town because of how long he stayed there. Even though that doesn't explain the code, Bill's comment, or the fact that Seuss always finds hidden stuff in the shack, maybe we really don't need to know this handyman's past. Number 8 what is the secret past of the Ankyridian? In Adventure Time Season 1 episode titled The Ankyridian, we are introduced to this brand new book that Finn finds called, well, The Ankyridian. It holds very worthwhile information about strange creatures in the world, helping heroes, and having the ability to do some pretty weird things like open wormholes between dimensions. There are a few key details about this book that we already know, like how in the episode I Remember You, it was revealed that Simon Petrikov, aka Ice King, found it in a mountain range. He gave it to a museum, but then after the war, it unexplainably traded hands to the characters shown in the Ankyridian episode of the show. This book played a major role throughout Adventure Time. Although the series went on for a very long time, the Ankyridian is largely a mystery that has more questions than answers. First, who exactly wrote it? The author of the journals. My brother. Some people theorize that more than one person in the past wrote inside this book, so it's like a collection of thoughts from various characters in history. Another theory is that it writes itself, which is very strange and doesn't seem to make much sense, though in the post-apocalyptic world of Adventure Time, there's a lot of weird things happening. Also, how exactly is the Ankyridian so magical to the point where it has access to tons of dimensions from the multiverse? One more big unsolved mystery comes from the information within the book. It talks about events of life after the Mushroom War, but it was discovered by Simon aka Ice King before the war. Does this mean that the book truly writes itself over time? Possibly. Or was it passed down generation to generation by different heroes who all had words to say in it before Finn? That could have been the case too. But still, the Ankyridian is just filled with questions that may never be solved, although that probably isn't too much of a bad thing either. Sometimes it's just nice to end a cartoon without revealing all the answers, then we can constantly theorize about strange objects like the Ankyridian even after the story of Adventure Time is over. It makes the Land of Ooh much more mysterious, which is pretty cool. Number 7. Where did Sparky go after Season 9? When the Fairly Odd Parents began to slowly get worse and worse, the crew behind the show, as well as Nickelodeon, decided that something had to be done. This is why new characters began showing up that would stick around supposedly until the end, and it's also where many people claim that the Fairly Odd Parents got worse. One of these characters was Sparky, a magical fairy dog that Timmy adopts in the Season 9 premiere Fairly Odd Pet. Sparky didn't really add much to the formula of the show, he was only there to spice things up and keep viewers interested. Fan reception of this character was actually so negative that he was literally deleted from the show after season 9 ended, and that's where this unsolved mystery comes in. What exactly happened to this fairy dog? I mean, yeah, outside of the show, we know that the real reason for his disappearance is because people just didn't want to see more of him, but inside of the show's canon, there is absolutely no reason. When introducing brand new main characters, it makes a lot of sense to explain why they're there in the first place, which is why all the new ones, Poof, Sparky, and Chloe, had their very own beginning episode episodes which set up the reason they even existed. You'd assume this would happen if a character leaves, right? But nope. When season 10 rolled around, there was absolutely no episode or explanation talking about Sparky leaving and why he was suddenly gone from everyone's minds. The absence was never explained in the Fairly Odd Parents universe, and instead, nobody continued mentioning the name of Sparky. The worst part about this unsolved mystery is that the show is over and may not have a real series finale tying up loose ends, so it's doubtful we're gonna get an answer to this. Since it really bothers me that Sparky is there one episode and gone the next with zero explanation, I'm gonna go ahead and explain it by him running away and, and then Jorgen wiping everyone's memories of his existence for some reason. It's canon you guys, I'm calling it canon right here. I can't prove it, but uh, you can't disprove it either. Anyway, Sparky may have been a dumb character, but there's no denying that he is very cute. Number 6 who is Pearl's mom and how is Mr. Krabs her dad? Daddy, 
They'll kick me off the most frequently pictured in the yearbook committee. Yeah, they would. We've got to find someone else. Listen up! Which one of you lucky lovers wants to take me lovely daughter Pearl to the prom? Just don't be late, SpongeBob. Everyone knows Pearl and how she constantly complains, acting like a true annoying teenage girl. You also know that her dad is none other than Mr. Krabs, owner of the Krusty Krab and one of the main characters in SpongeBob. Well, Mr. Krabs being the dad of a whale is one mystery that may never truly get an answer, as well as the identity of Pearl's true mother. There's a possible theory going around that Pearl was in trouble at some point long ago, and then Mr. Krabs found her and decided to adopt her. Maybe Pearl's real mom died, so Mr. Krabs came into take her place as Guardian. Throughout the show, the talk of her mom is kept very minimal. She's almost never mentioned, presumably because she isn't around anymore in any condition to take care of her daughter. Is she no longer alive? Or did she just abandon Pearl as a young whale? These are questions that are unfortunately unsolved. We can speculate about this topic for a while, but the truth is that the show may never actually dive into that mystery and reveal what happened in the past. SpongeBob's lore is so small, and there aren't typically episodes giving answers to long-running mysteries so I doubt we'll ever find out Pearl's real mom or how Pearl is the daughter of Mr. Krabs. Vincent Waller, crew member on the show, has said on Twitter that currently Steven Hellenberg is against solving the mystery of Pearl's mom. Why? Maybe because it's better off not knowing, but there's still a part of me that really wants to have an answer. Hillenberg probably has a few thoughts about the topic, though he won't reveal them to anyone. An interesting part about this situation is how sometimes throughout the series, Mr. Krabs is surprised and yells out, Mother of Pearl! This is clearly referring to Pearl's secret mom, but those are just about the only times this character character is even mentioned. Number 5. Are Cosmo and Wanda going to leave Timmy? Timmy's in trouble! We should do something! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to discussion on the Fairly Odd Parents. I know I just did an unsolved mystery about that, but we have another. In the show, there have been many cases where Timmy really should have lost his fairy godparents, but in every situation, he always gets them back by the end of the episode. No matter what, you'll be watching the show, and he has Cosmo and Wanda floating right behind him, ready to grant him any wish he wants. Because the Fairly Odd Parents ended in season 10 with no real series finale or fitting end, we never see Timmy lose his godparents. Is he going to keep them forever or will he age and then lose him as well as his own memory? Honestly, there's a chance that he's going to find some way to keep them forever. In the special episode Timmy's Secret Wish, he makes a wish that everyone would stop aging for many decades just so he would stop aging and then be able to keep Cosmo and Wanda during that time period. Timmy usually doesn't learn from the mistakes he's made, finding loopholes to get exactly what he wants. Also, he has saved the universe on multiple occasions, so I wouldn't be surprised if Jorgen makes an exception that he can keep his fairy for the rest of his life. It seriously bothers me that the Fairly Odd Parents never got a proper final episode, since there are so many loose ends that would have been nice to see finished. Canonically, Timmy may age inside the universe of the show and then lose his fairies, but we will never have the true answer for sure because the Fairly Odd Parents stopped airing. Could he have found a way to keep his fairies? Possibly. Will we ever find out? Nope. Unless, of course, Butch Hartman tells us someday, but we shouldn't rely on that. Hey, heart fans! I'm just gonna say that Timmy ended up keeping Cosmo and Wanda forever, since he could have easily just made the same wish of everyone not aging for an infinite amount of decades. Of course, the rules exist in the universe, but Timmy will bypass them and keep his fairies even after growing older. That's what I think, though a true answer may never be revealed. Number four. What is it like everywhere else in the world besides the Land of Ooh? Even though it's the main setting in Adventure Time, the Land of Ooh doesn't take up the entire world. In fact, the creator of the series Pendleton Ward has stated that Ooh is merely a continent. When looking at various maps, you can tell that it really isn't all the land of Earth. Even though Adventure Time has Finn and Jake going around and journeying through a wide variety of places, it's rare that they ever go outside of Ooh to explore. What's really out there though? We know about the Great Mushroom War and how it also made the rest of the world post-apocalyptic, but Ooh is probably very different from everything else. One of the key series of events when finding out what exactly was outside this land was the Islands miniseries. After an arrival of a mysterious human transport ship, Finn, Jake, Susan Strong, and Bimo set sail to four islands southwest of Ooh in search of other humans. 
During their trip, they unlock secrets, encounter various creatures, make new friends, and explore a variety of islands. Find out about what really happened to the human race, and Finn meets a very important member of his family. What's really special about Islands is that our main characters head to destinations previously completely unknown. Finn had no idea that there were other humans out there since he thought he was the last person or one of the last people to exist on Earth. Although this Islands miniseries was pretty short, it gave us a lot of awesome lore to the strange universe of Adventure Time. However, the bad part to all this is that while Islands gave us a small glimpse of the land outside of Ooh, there's still so much more that hasn't been explored. What we do know about the rest of the world is that there are a minimal amount of people, which can be explained by some characters' reactions to Finn's existence. Still, leaving the land of Ooh, there could be absolutely anything out there in the post-apocalyptic world. Honestly, it would be really cool to see a spin-off of this show focusing on a completely different and separate part of the world just because it hasn't been done too much in the main series. This will probably never happen, but it would answer a lot of unexplained questions and give us some key ideas about this mystery. Number 3. Is the Gravity Falls UFO crash what made the town so weird? The small town of Gravity Falls is an incredibly mysterious one, being home to creatures that really shouldn't even exist. Stanford, the author of the journal, spent a lot of time trying to figure out why supernatural occurrences kept appearing in this small Oregon town, which is why he created the journals in the first place. There were anomalies everywhere, and the more I looked, the more I saw. He wanted to write down his findings and attempt to solve the mystery of Gravity Falls' weirdness. In the episode Dipper and Mabel vs. the Future, Ford said that he's been to this place a ton of times and that the aliens have been dead for millions of years, meaning that the supernatural stuff could have also been going on for that amount of time. When heading to Crash Site Omega, he says something very significant. According to my research, Dipper, the entire valley of Gravity Falls was formed when an extraterrestrial object crash landed here millions of years ago. Did this craft cause the town's strange properties? Or or did the town's strange properties attract to the craft? The answer is still unknown. So yeah, he says right then and there that he has no idea if the town is weird because of the UFO crash, but it's certainly a possibility that shouldn't be ignored. The reason Ford even came to Gravity Falls and stayed in the building that would later become the Mystery Shack is because he wanted to explore the supernatural and why everything was attracted to this town. Despite being an incredibly large mystery in the background of the series, it never got an official answer and probably never will either. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because because discovering the source of the supernatural isn't the core goal in the show. It's growing up and learning how to overcome a very weird environment while moving towards the future. Maybe this mystery can be explored in a side story or a comic further down the line, but it's completely fine to not see the answer in the series, even though I am still a little curious. Number 2. Who is White Diamond and when will she reveal herself? Steven Universe's Great Diamond Authority consists of Blue Diamond, Yellow Diamond, Pink Diamond, and White Diamond. The show has slowly been revealing the appearances and personalities of each diamond, each time having been more exciting to watch than the last. Although we know so much about Blue, Yellow, and Pink, the character of White Diamond is completely unknown and there have only been a few glimpses of her seen. It looks like she's always on top in various depictions, so maybe she really is the leader of the diamonds and the one who runs everything behind the scenes. Plus, the fact that she is the only one who has yet to reveal herself is saying something big. At this point in the show, spoiler alert, Blue and Yellow aren't going to be the main antagonists anymore. However, White Diamond is a complete wild card because the series just hasn't given us much information about her. There are a few things we do know. She's the tallest diamond and definitely much bigger than the others, which can be noted especially when you see her hand compared to Blue and Yellow's. Various episodes like The Trial have showed us small pictures of her design. We know she has this head with some spikes, but her official face hasn't been revealed yet. When exactly will White Diamond reveal herself though? Luckily, this is unlike many of the other mysteries in this video because the answer will be shown soon because Steam Universe is ongoing. This series has been gradually building up to her, and the incredible debut may very well be in the next season. With the way it's been going, we already know about every other big diamond and there are barely any enemies left, so White Diamond could be like the final boss of the show. Whenever she steps into the spotlight, 
later on. Steven Universe is going to change once again, and Steven himself may have to face off against the most powerful villain yet. Number 1. What is the Krabby Patty secret formula? Let's face it, when you clicked on a video about unsolved cartoon mysteries, how could the Krabby Patty secret formula not be number 1? Why do all the fish in Bikini Bottom love eating Krabby Patty so much? Friend or foe reveals that a pinch of chum is inside of a typical Krabby Patty, along with various other ingredients such as flour and salt. Another ingredient is just called the secret sauce, which really isn't being specific at all. One of the most popular predictions regarding the formula is that Krabby Patties are secretly made out of crab, which would explain the reason for this imitation crab meat on the list that used to be on Nickelodeon's website. Of course, this isn't trustworthy because it's not on the site anymore, though it'd be insane if crab meat actually was the secret ingredient. This is one of those mysteries that doesn't seem like it'll ever have a true answer. Why would it? If there ever is a true formula revealed in the show, then honestly the treasure would lose its value. Part of the fun is theorizing about what it could be, and knowing all about it would kind of ruin the excitement. If it ever does get shown, then it would be a series finale event for sure. What's wrong, boy? Ah! We're out of Krabby Patties! How can we make more Krabby Patties without the secret formula? You've got to have that formula memorized by now! But as you are aware, sir, the employee handbook clearly states, and I quote, no employee may impart or in whole commit the Krabby Patty secret formula to any recorded, written, or visual form, including memories, dreams, and or needlepoint. Steven Hillenberg probably has a decent idea of what the secret formula is, since he knows way more about this show than everyone else since he's the one who thought of just about everything. Even if he does have the formula inside his head, it's unlikely that he'll ever spill the beans, though I'm fine with not knowing for sure. No matter what. This formula is extremely valuable and it makes the Krabby Patty the most popular food in Bikini Bottom, so the fun is theorizing about what it could be. But anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos. Give a thumbs up and comment below let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and oh my god, this was a really long video. I had to edit a lot. Hopefully you enjoyed. Please just comment if you enjoyed.